Hey, it's Sound Guy Barry. And one of the questions that I get is, Hey Bear, what's the best microphone? So let's talk about microphones. Now, when we're talking about microphones and what the difference is between different microphones, there's a few different characteristics that we pay attention to. One is the technology. There's different types of pickup elements that are available. And there's several types, but the ones that you're most likely to encounter are moving coil microphones or dynamic microphones or condenser microphones or capacitor microphones. And uh, there's some other types, but those are the two main types that you're likely to uh, encounter in your day-to-day -day use of microphones. They both have their advantages. The moving coil microphones or dynamic microphones are completely passive devices. That is, sound goes in, electricity comes out. They also tend to be pretty rugged. The capacitor microphones, on the other hand, are more sensitive generally, and they have a more delicate, sensitive element inside of them that requires some power because they have electronics within the microphone itself that needs to be powered. And so a capacitor microphone will likely require the use of phantom power on your mixing board. You'll probably find a little button saying phantom power enabled in order to make use of those kind of microphones. Some capacitor microphones will use a battery inside of the microphone. The other thing that we pay attention to when comparing one microphone versus another is the polar pattern, which is some microphones are omnidirectional, meaning that they'll gladly pick up sound from any direction, front to the side of the, the microphone, maybe even from the rear. And so they're not very critical on which direction they're pointed. They'll pick up sounds from everywhere. Other microphones are cardioid patterned, which um, means that they're going to be more sensitive off the front of the microphone rather than the sides or the rear. And then we have other patterns like hypercardioid, meaning that they're really sensitive on the front and much less sensitive on the sides or rear. Then thirdly, the question is how accurate of a frequency response does the microphone have? That is, if you put low frequency sounds in, and high frequency sounds in, or mid frequency sounds, does the microphone accentuate or diminish any of those ranges? Now, you would think that a perfect microphone would be perfectly flat. So whatever goes in is perfectly represented by what comes out. And um, here is an example. This is a Shure SM81 studio mic, and it has nearly perfectly flat response. And so that makes it the world's best microphone because it is extremely accurate in its recording. And it's a great mic. It's uh, commonly used in a lot of studios. Shure has had these things out for a long, long time. The SM81 is a terrific go-to microphone for recording all kinds of stuff. It's probably one of the first mics that I'd reach for if I was grabbing a mic to uh, do a recording of an acoustic guitar, maybe drum overheads, violins, pianos. Almost all sorts of acoustic instruments would be rendered very nicely by a Shure SM81. And as you can see, in a pinch, it's even a pretty darn good vocal microphone. So there you have it, the world's best microphone, a Shure SM81. Uh, no? You, oh, so, so you don't want a microphone with perfectly flat response? You'd like to have a microphone that actually makes you sound better than you are? Well, I guess I can understand that because, you know, just about every woman that I know has a large collection of cosmetics. And that's just because, you know, the fact is we can't handle the truth. So you want a microphone that's going to make you sound even better than you really are. Well, let's try this. Well, here you have it. This is the world's best microphone. This is a Neumann U87. Not just a Neumann U87. This is a late 1960s vintage U87. This is probably the world's best vocal microphone. And you can tell. You can tell how wonderful my voice sounds with this Neumann U87. This mic, this is the go-to mic. If you go to a studio I mean a real studio, not this like $100 an hour nonsense. I mean like a real studio like Paisley Park or the Hit Factory or CBS Records. 
where like real engineers work with real equipment and put out real hit records. This is probably the microphone that they're going to put in front of you. This microphone is the microphone that National Public Radio uses for all of their DJs because, my God, it makes you sound like a superstar. It's great, isn't it? It's just fabulous. Well, sure, sure. Now, now, you know, people have different voices and microphones have different characteristics. And so, sure, there's a chance that the U87 might not be for you. But it is for a lot of people. And so it's generally considered one of those golden microphones, one of those studio classic standard mics. And if you're in a big studio or a real studio, this is probably the mic that they're going to give you. Because it's just amazing, isn't it? So how can you go wrong with the Neumann U87 Classic, the world's best mic? Well, sure, it's not cheap. I mean, the good things aren't cheap. This mic will set you back about $4,000. You might be able to get a... um, Actually, this mic is priceless. You can't get a vintage U87 unless you really shop around the used market. And, well, then it's going to cost you. But you could get a new one. You could get a new one, which aren't quite as good in my opinion, but they're, they're still really good. It's about 4000 bucks. And so what a deal, huh? Oh, you think that's a little too much to spend on a microphone? Well, that is outside the price range of a lot of musicians. I'll give you that. So um, you can make a compromise and still get into a really good side address large diaphragm condenser like this like a neumann tlm 103 or you know something that's a little less expensive for the for about a thousand bucks and hell you know even for like five hundred dollars between five hundred and a thousand dollars you can get into this class of microphone that's a pretty darn good product make your vocal sound fantastic you the five hundred dollars still too much for your budget well, sometimes you got to go cheap, I guess. Not going to get the sound of a classic U87, unless you pay the money, of course. But I might have something for you. Let's try this. Okay, guys. Now, I am not normally a big fan of cheap large diaphragm condenser mics. You know, less than 500 bucks. I just think they have a weird sound character generally but here's an exception this here is the audio technica at 2020 now as you can hear i think it sounds fantastic and it's affordable you can pick up one of these guys for about a hundred bucks and uh this mic works great on all kinds of things I, i think it's a terrific vocal mic i think it also works great for recording just general instruments acoustic guitars drum overheads um, most any kind of acoustic instrument that isn't extremely loud in its output. You know, I wouldn't put a microphone like this inside of a kick drum, for example. But for most general purpose applications, a hundred bucks for an Audio Technica 2020, you can't beat it. So there you have it. There's the world's best microphone. How 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 would it make your vocal sound in your live performance? Well. Well, it does pick up vocals really great, but with its wide pickup pattern and high sensitivity where it tends to pick up everything around it, and it's um, a large diaphragm condenser, so it's not the kind of mic that you'd want to drop on the floor. You might only get to do that sort of thing once or twice, like any of the mics that we've just looked at. Uh, it's probably not well suited for a live stage, especially with like a rock band or something. You'd most likely have just really difficult to control feedback situations with a mic like this oh okay well let, let's see what we can have in that instance so you want a microphone that's going to give you the kind of crisp clean clear sound out of this condenser that you can use for your band okay okay here you go so here we have the sure sm 86 live vocal microphone which is a condenser mic and it's a ruggedized condenser so it will probably handle the rigors of playing on the road with the band it's got pretty good side rejection and rear rejection so it's not going to be as prone to feedback as some of the other choices that we've just seen and it has a great sound characteristic for vocals 
And um, this is also a pretty inexpensive mic. You can pick one of these up for about 150 bucks. So I think it's a terrific value if you're looking for a really good sounding vocal mic for your band that's super clean and clear and is a condenser mic and it isn't super expensive so maybe that's the world's best microphone for you um but it's a condenser and so it is going to accentuate the highs somewhat and if you have a loud stage like you're in a rock band it probably still is going to be kind of touchy for feedback you know, if you're playing an acoustic set somewhere with your acoustic guitar, you know, in the corner of a a pub, that's probably a great choice. But if you're on big stage with a lot of volume, playing heavy metal, that's maybe not the best choice for you. Also, since it is a condenser microphone, it's ruggedized, but it's not, you know, that rugged. Um, I wouldn't want to drop this mic on the floor. So maybe it doesn't fit your applications perfectly. Let's try something else. Well, here you have it. You're probably familiar with this mic. A good chance you are. The Shure SM57. This is like one of the world's most popular mics ever. And it's got a brother, which is the SM58, which is identical to this, except it has a round ball um, on the head of it, which is more geared towards vocal performance. The 57 here is a general purpose instrument mic, but it works for vocals too. They're the same mic practically. They um, have the same innards inside of them. The only difference is that the 57 has this flat grill on it and the 58 has the round ball type grill that has a pop filter so you get less of that, you know, pee popping kind of vocal stuff. So the 58's a little better suited for vocal use where the 57's a little better suited for... Um, picking up guitar amps and instruments and such. This mic here is probably what I would call my desert island mic. If I was stuck on a desert island and I had to choose one mic, sure, 57. This thing picks up just about every sound source well, from drum overheads to kick drum to vocals, you name it. It might not be the very, very best choice, but it's going to get the job done and usually in a pretty aplomb fashion. I mean, listen to it. It's not a bad vocal mic. I sound just fine on a Shure 57. And these things are tough as nails. You can pound nails with one of these things, and chances are it'll still work. This is the mic that, although I would never recommend dropping a mic on the floor, if I had to drop a mic on the floor, this is the mic I'd grab, because chances are it's going to work just fine after you pick it up. So you can't beat a Shure 57 or a 58. They're an industry standard. If, if you can't make your band sound good using just Shure 57s and 58s, you've got a real problem as a sound guy. I'll put it that way. There's nothing wrong with these mics. They, for that reason, they've been around forever. And uh, it's an industry standard. And it's the mic that you know a lot of other vocal mics used in the live sound business kind of aspire to be. And it's cheap. It's cheap. It's like a hundred bucks. You can pick up one of these things brand new for a hundred bucks. You can go on Craigslist and probably find someone fifty or sixty dollars. And this mic is a good performer, and it's super rugged. And if you purchase a Shure fifty-seven or fifty-eight, and you um, give it even the most minimal of decent treatment, it'll probably outlive you. How can you beat a Shure fifty-seven? World's best mic. Okay, well, maybe it's not the world's best mic. It um, doesn't have the greatest sound in the world. I mean, it's very good, don't get me wrong. But there are other mics that I think do sound better and other mics that do have tighter polar patterns which resist feedback more than a Shure 57 or 58. So let's take a look at that. Well, the obvious next choice here is the Shure Beta 57. This is intended to be Shure's upgraded version of the mic we just looked at. And I like it a lot. I'm a big fan of the Beta 57A. As you can see, it's got a little bit more of a crispy tone to it. It gives just a bit more punch in the mix than the original 57 does. It's got a really tight polar pattern so that it resi resists your feedback issues even stronger than the 57. 
And uh, I think it's a great mic for picking up guitar amps. And in a pinch, it works for vocals pretty darn well as well. Now, Shure also makes the Beta 58, which has some of the similar characteristics. It's got a tighter pattern for resisting feedback, even stronger than the standard 58 does, and a little more punch in the upper mid-range frequencies that'll help your vocals cut through the mix better. Personally, for me, I'm not a fan of the Beta 58. I just don't think it sounds right. But the 57A, I'm a big fan of. And this is not an expensive mic. You can get the regular 57 for about 100 bucks. I think this one's like about 125. So there's a great choice for you. The Shure Beta 57A dynamic mic. Really rugged, sounds great, better feedback rejection, and um, legendary Shure quality. Great stuff. But you still don't really like the uh, tone characteristic of the, the Shure 57, 58 series? Okay, well, there's a lot of choices in this price range. And there's a lot of good choices made by different manufacturers, such as AKG, Electro Voice, Sennheiser, Biodynamic, and so on, Audix. So let's take a look at one of the competitors to this family of mics that I'm a big fan of. Maybe it suits you better. Well, here's another good choice. This here is the AKG D5. They also make the C5. The D5 is a dynamic microphone. The C5 is a capacitor microphone. So the C5 is going to have a little more crispy high end and will require phantom power and will probably be a little bit more delicate in its handling and a little bit more feedback prone if you're right in the edge close to feedback on stage. But I love the dynamic D5 version. I think this is a really great sounding mic and it has outstanding feedback rejection because it doesn't have a lot of pickup off to the sides or rear. Um, I just think it's got a great tone and it's about the same price as a Shure 58. It's about a hundred bucks. So if you're in that price range looking for a great vocal mic, here you go. Check out the AKG D5. I think it's a wonderful choice. And of course, your voice may sound best on a particular mic and my voice might sound best on a different mic. So you just have to audition a few different microphones with your particular voice to see what works best for you. But I'm a big fan of the D5, so it's certainly a worthy contender. And like I said, there's a lot of great mics in this range. So you might also want to look at Audix OM2s or the whole OM range, depending upon what your price situation is. Um, Electro Voice makes some terrific mics. Uh, so sample several to see what works best for your voice. But here's one to check out, the AKG D5. I think it's a tremendous, terrific microphone, and it's a worthy competitor to the Shure SM58. Oh, but you want a mic that's going to make you sound really good and have just superior feedback rejection because you're in a really loud band and you have had those sorts of issues? i got a mic for you. Well, guys, this here is probably my personal favorite live performance vocal microphone for rock bands. That's right. It's the Audix OM7. Now, the OM7 has extremely tight side rejection of sounds. So if you're singing into the middle of it, it sounds nice and clear. But if you get off to the side, it just falls off rapidly on this mic. So it has a really strong ability to reject all the noise coming in from the backside or the side sides of the microphone and keep your vocals sharp and bright and clear and articulate right through the mains and the PA. It really will elevate your vocal performance in some cases. And so this is one of my favorite mics to use when I'm working with live bands because it just is so good at rejecting feedback and it's a great sounding mic. Now, of course, you're going to pay a little extra for a high-end mic. This mic is about $250, and it's the Audix OM7. Another thing to be aware of with this mic is that it has fairly low output signal, which is never really an issue. It just means that on your mixing board, you probably have to bump your preamp gains just a little bit higher than you normally would with some other microphones. 
but that's no issue. It sounds great. It works great. And it's a tremendous mic for live rock and roll bands or other situations where you have to reject outside noise and get clean, clear projection of your vocals. So this here is probably the world's best live vocal mic if this mic works well with your vocals. So there you have it, folks. There's, Of course, we could go on all day checking out different microphones, but I hope this gave you a sample of what some of these different mics sound like, some of the choices that you could encounter. And um, the bottom line is the very best vocal mic is the one that makes you sound the best that fits your needs. And so some of these mics sound really terrific, but they're not going to work on a live stage. And other mics will work on a live stage, but they might not be the very, very best mic for doing a studio recording. So you have to look at the characteristics you're working with and make the best compromises you can in the situation that you're dealing with. And I hope that uh, you found it interesting to take a listen to the sound character of a few of these different microphones. So you can see that in many cases the differences really are kind of subtle. But the best thing to do is to go to a audio store that has the time to work with you and try out several different microphones and see what really works best for you and your voice before making a decision. Hope it was informative and I hope to see you again soon. If you enjoy this kind of content I would love to have you watch more of it and so be reminded by hitting that there subscribe button and we'll catch you next time. Thanks. This has been Sound Guy Barry out of the Twin Cities and I hope to see you again soon. Take care.